Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, please go down and click subscribe and that little bell notification icon so you'll be notified when I publish new content. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you very much. Either way, I appreciate each and every one of you. <clears throat> if you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. That's our promise to you. And we do specialize in voice over IP, networking, and security. Now that that's over, I know why you're all here. You are super excited about this, which is the new Ubiquity Dream Machine that has been released to general availability. I want to thank Ubiquity for sending this box, well, not really a box, more like a more like a vase over to me. And uh, in this, there's an access point, a switch, and a security gateway. And it does run uh, UBOS, which is a version of Linux specifically created by Ubiquity for these devices. So uh, real quick, what we're going to do is I'm going to um, uplink my... Uh, UDM to the network. Now, we'll do that. I may have to reboot it. Not sure. I'm going to plug my laptop in and I'm going to uh, disable my Wi Fi so we can set this up. We'll take a look at the specs real quick before we get into that uh, too much further. So, uh, it does have a 4x4 Wave 2 access point built in. It has the 4-port gigabit switch. It uh, can run IDS, IPS, and DPI at a much higher rate than any of the current security gateways. Um, you can plug other devices into this and manage them. And it has a quad-core 1.7 gigahertz ARM processor. Uh, so you can kind of see some of the things that they're talking about here. Now... Let's get some of the elephants in the room out of the way up front. First, you cannot manage this from another Unify controller. It has its own built-in cloud key, its own built-in controller. Uh, and you, so you have to manage the device from here. However, you can, and you're going to see, we will be forced to actually use our Ubiquity single sign-on account to set this up, which is not bad because it's got two-factor authentication. And on this model, those settings actually flow down to the local device, which is awesome. Um, then you, well, you do have to have internet to set it up. You can't manage it from another controller. You cannot have multiple sites on this device. So people are probably going to be a little upset about that. Uh, but if you think about the target demographic for this device, this is not, this is probably going to be a home, a higher end home, a luxury condo, things like that. Um, but you do get two-factor authentication locally. We'll poke around on it a little bit, but you do have to have internet to set it up. And if you're double natted like I am, word to the wise, when it does its provider test automatically that you're going to see, it's going to set smart queues and limit your WAN port. So internally, even though I have a gigabit network, it uses that internet speed test to set those smart queues automatically. So we'll take a look at all that. But uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to... Now disable my Wi-Fi, and I'm going to make sure that I have an IP from the Dream Machine. Looks like I do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to setup.ui.com, which normally, if you just plug in, it's going to redirect you to that when you try to get on the Internet. Uh, Firefox is going to give you a message that says you need to log in, and Chrome is you know going to redirect you to this. So this is the setup portal and you're going to need your Ubiquity single sign-on account and uh, you should have two-factor authentication enabled for that. If you don't, why don't you? You should definitely have two-factor authentication enabled. Okay, so step one of nine, Dream Machine Setup. What do we want to call it? We're going to call this Willy Base UDM. And we agree, of course, to the end user license agreement. Make sure you read that. Uh, I don't know if I pop that up real quick. Yeah, so here is the EULA. Make sure that you're paying attention to the EULA. Uh, there's another thing in here that will surprise you after all the kerfluffle that happened this week. 
All right, so cr you can create a UI.com account now, or you can say, I already have an account, and I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in to uh, UI here. And when I hit enter, it's going to come up, and you can see now it wants a two-factor authentication token. So I'm pulling up my two-factor authentication, and I am going to log in. Okay, step three and nine. Do we want to auto-optimize the network? And look at this. So here we have an, an, a, we actually have a, uh, a slider that will let us opt out of sending diagnostics and performance information to Ubiquity. I'm going to leave that enabled because I'm going to pound away on this thing. I am going to disable the auto-optimize. Uh, Wi-Fi setup. I'm going to call this what the, what the, what the Wi-Fi. Now, if I go to advanced options, we're going to see that here it is already planned to separate the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz network into separate SSIDs. I don't want that. I want everything to just be one. I want my devices to choose whether they're going to connect to 2 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck, or unslide that, and I'm going to click next. Now, update uh, schedule. Right now, you can see that the UDM itself will update daily. I'm going to disable that. Uh, you do have the option of daily, weekly, or monthly, but I'm going to disable it. I don't want any auto updates at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and click next. It's going to give me a recap, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and click next there. Now, this is where it's going to run that internet speed test. So right now it's going out, and it's, and it's going to do a download test, and it's going to do an upload test. And you can see right now it says I'm getting 70, 66, 65 megabits down and it'll do an upload test here in a minute. So what this is going to do then is going to enable smart queues and it's going to put these settings in there if I don't do anything else. Well, I have gigabit internet internally. And if I don't, um, if I don't change these settings or I don't disable the smart queues, what's going to happen is it's going to limit how much data I can push through that WAN port. So what I'm actually going to do is when this comes up, I could just accept this, but then I'd probably forget to turn the smart cues off. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put 1,024 megabits. Um, it would be 1,024? Yeah, 1,024. And say done. Now it's going to set up the network. And uh, whether you believe me or not, because you can't see it, the, the ring on the top of this is actually going to go, it'll go blue when it's done. When it hits the single sign-on account, um, it will go, it'll go blue instead of white, and then the device will, will be set up. So we're going to give this just a few minutes here, and then we're going to dive into the interface, take a look at it, and then maybe splash around in UBOS just a little bit. So one thing to note, uh, you're going to see when we get into this that um, you're going to, it's going to push the, the version of Unify running on this has two factor authentication built into it. So if you're managing it locally, you're still going to get prompted for two factor authentication, which kudos to Ubiquity for including that. I don't know if other versions of Unify are going to get that or if it's going to be relegated to the Dream Machine series of hardware, but uh, one can hope that they will roll that two-factor authentication out. So we can launch our network dashboard by clicking here. You can see it's going out to the unify.ui.com site. It's already, it's going directly into the subsite that is the Unify or the uh, Unify Dream Machine. Or we can click unify.home. It's going to come up and you can see we can either launch the Unify network here or we can manage our Dream Machine settings. So let's real quick go over to our Dream Machine settings. We'll look at this. So 
We are now prompted for a username and password. This is gonna be your Ubiquity single sign-on account. And look at that, I am prompted for my 2FA token, which is beautiful. I don't mind having to, uh, to put that in. All right, so here is a nice looking little portal. If you have a Cloud Key Gen 2, you are used to this user interface. You can see we're connected to the internet. We have an active Unify network. This is the Unified Dream Machine on firmware version uh, 1.5.0. So if you look at the storage, so this thing I think has two gigs of RAM, but storage one is like 12.2 gigs and then there's 120 meg storage. The uh, LAN interface is 192.168.2.1. Flip over here to uh, the performance screen. You can see all of the metrics that we have here, the CPU load, temperature, memory, storage. So you can see we're using 998 megs of 12 gig. Come over here to the controllers. You can see that Unify network is running. It is active. Come over here on under settings. We've got general settings, time zone and name, hardware. We can factory reset it um, or reboot it. Now also on the bottom of this device, there is actually a reset button. If you hold this for 10 seconds, one, 1,000, two, one, 10 seconds, it will factory default the device. Then under firmware, you can see we can manually update the firmware. It tells us that our firmware is up to date. So let's close that and let's launch the local version of the Unify controller. So you can see, look, 192.168.2.1 colon 8443. We're getting the security prompt. Okay, my username, my username. And my password, watch this, it's gonna be amazing. Two-factor authentication token. Like I said, I do not mind going back to the app and putting this in. Okay, so now we are, um, we are logged into now the local version of Unify on this box. And you can see Dream Machine Utilizations, 10%. One switch, one access point, zero clients, zero guests. So the controller looks very, very familiar. We'll come over here to settings. Now they have this new, if we click try new settings, you're going to see it changes this whole UI. And at the moment, this confuses me. I'm just kidding. But we are going to switch back to classic mode. Now site, we're going to call this... Uh, UDM base, so we can change that because I the default stuff drives me nuts. Now, under provider capabilities, you can see I've got this set at 1,024, 1,024. The optimize, auto optimize network is disabled. If I want to see my SSH credentials, which really don't do me any good because here is, um, here is something here. So let's we, let's SSH into this. Well, you know what? Let's view the credentials. We'll turn that on. I never automatically upgrade the firmware, by the way. So it's UBNT is the username. So let's do SSH UBNT at 192.168.2.1. Yes, I'm going to put in my... Um, here, let's see what this is. Let's copy and paste this. I can't remember what the SSH credentials are for this, so I might be doing this wrong. Okay, so that's not it. So let's do this. Let's do SSH WHOW82 at 192.168.2.1. And you can see we're getting this. Welcome to UBOS. So let's put a password in and see. Um paste this other password. So let's do SSH root at 192.168.2.1. Ah, so it's root and then your single sign-on account password. So you can see we're logged into the Dream Machine um, and this is definitely their own version of Linux, uh, this UBOS. So I'm going to be in here messing around. I'm probably going to put a certificate on this. Um, so this is going to run a lot more 
like a uh, a traditional, you know, version of Linux, um, except it's it's ubiquity. So, but it's everything all crammed into one: the switch, the the cloud key, the access point, and the security gateway. So it is, but it is a, this full version of UBOS. And unless you know what you're doing, or you're directed, or you don't care if you if you your machine, uh, then I would say stay stay out of here. But just know that this is a full version of Ubiquiti's proprietary Linux that is running under the hood. We'll go back over here to devices, and you can see that it names the devices the same way that that uh, Unify does by the MAC address. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here on the UDM, and we're going to say Willie's UDM base and we'll save that. Now it's going to rename all of those sub devices. And I can click on the security gateway portion and you can see that uh, there are a lot of the settings that you're used to. So this at least has, you know, some parity with uh, the uh, self-hosted version of Unify, the USG, the access point, all that good stuff. So I can come into configuration here it tells you, you know, where to go to make these these changes. But here's like your MSS clamping or your MTU. Um, if we come over here to the switch, we can go into ports. We can change those VLANs. We can change all those settings just like a regular Unify switch. And here is the access point. So you can see all the information. We can come in here and we can tune this access point just like a standard Ubiquiti access point. So the use case for this, like I said, probably a higher end home, condo. Uh, maybe I am a service provider for MDUs. Um, you know, I'm going to resell service and I'm going to deliver this and, and uh, you know, let the people manage it or I'm going to manage it. So like I said, look, you you know, you're missing the site, the site. Uh, is gone. You can only, uh, you know, manage this thing by itself or with the cloud. So we'll get uh, more into this. What do you want to know about the UDM? What do you want me to dig into? What videos do you want to see next on the UDM? Put that information down in the comments, please. Right now, I've got no solid plans besides just getting in here, getting into the weeds, seeing how things really work. So let me know what you want me to pick apart on this. Um, or if, you know, you, oh, real quick, we talked about the, um, the, the admins. And so if we come in here and we go to admins, so I can add a new admin so I can do the invite and it's going to happen automatically. And by the way, alerting is our, uh, automatically set up with this since you're using the, uh, ubiquity, uh, cloud service. But if I want to, uh, create a an admin. I can create an admin for this device just by using this screen where it says manually set and share the password. So then if um, they're internal inside to the network, uh, you can uh, let them log in here. Another neat little trick is, is if you come into the routing and firewall and you create a WAN local 8443 rule, you can then access this version of Unify that is on this box from the WAN IP of the UDM. So, but anyway, what else do you want to see about the UDM? Let me know below. We'll crank out some videos. Next videos are going to be all about Grandstream stuff and a follow-up from the last Grandstream video, but we will dig into this UDM as well. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you to all my patrons. And if you'd like to support the channel by becoming a uh, patron, that link is down below. You're under no obligation to use affiliate links. It is greatly appreciated. They are all down below uh, because they do help kick a few bucks to the channel and they don't change your price. Once again, I want to thank Ubiquity for sending this dream machine over to me. And as always, I will see you in the next video.